In this video, we're going to try and put together our knowledge of division and factors and zeros and how we can factor and solve polynomials. So in number one, it says given x minus 2 is a factor of p of x equals x to the fourth minus 29x squared plus 100, find the other factors. Well, we could start out by trying to factor this one, but instead I'm going to use the knowledge that we know this is a factor. So if we know that's a factor, that means if we take p of x and we divide it by x minus 2, there is no remainder. So this needs to go in evenly. So if I'm going to set this up as a division problem, I'm going to have x minus 2. I'm going to be going into p of x here. So starting out with p of x, my first term in p of x is x to the fourth, so I'm going to put that in. Then on the top, what do I multiply x by to get x to the fourth? Well, I'd need an x cubed. Then I can do the bottom cell. x cubed times negative 2 is negative 2x cubed. But I'm not supposed to have negative 2x cubed. If I look at my original polynomial right here, I don't have any x cubes. So if I have to get rid of the minus 2x cubes I have, I'm going to have to put plus 2x cubes in my next box. So then I can figure out what must have been up top here so that when I multiply it by the x, I get 2x cubed. I'd need a 2, an x, and a squared. Then for the bottom box, 2x squared times negative 2 is negative 4x squared. I'm going to go back to my original polynomial. I'm supposed to have negative 29x squared. I currently have negative 4x squared, so I need another negative 25x squared. If I have negative 25x squared on the inside, what must I have multiplied x by? Must be a negative 25x times x to get negative 25x squared. Then I can multiply in the bottom cell, negative 25x times negative 2 is positive 50x. Looking back to my original problem, I'm not supposed to have positive 50x. In here, I don't have any x's. So if I've got to get rid of the positive 50x's I have, I need negative 50x's in the box. I'm just going to keep making this longer. What must I have multiplied on the top? I must have multiplied by negative 50. Then negative 50 times positive 2 is positive 100. Last, I'm going to check back to my original problem here. I'm supposed to have positive 100, so this worked out. That tells me that both x minus 2 is a factor, and the other factor is the answer to the division up here on the top. I can rewrite p of x as x minus 2 times x cubed plus 2x squared minus 25x minus 50. I'm supposed to find the other factors, so if I want to try to factor this completely, I'm going to need to factor some more. So I already have my x minus 2 out. The other factor that I have left right now has four terms, so I'm going to hope that I can factor this by grouping. If I can factor this by grouping, I should be able to put each of these four factors into a box, because this is my area right here, my cubic. And then I want to see if I can factor the GCF of the top row would be x squared. If I take that out, what must go on top? x times x squared would be x to the cube. Over here, I'd have to have a plus 2 to get 2x squared. Down here on the bottom, what times x gives me negative 25x? That'd be a negative 25. And then as my final check, does negative 25 times negative 2 equal, I'm sorry, negative 25 times positive 2 equal negative 50? Yes, it does. So I've then factored some more. I'm going to make this so I can see the whole page. Okay, so now my p of x, I have the x minus 2 that I already had out in front, and now I've factored my cubic into x squared minus 25 times x plus 2. But I'm not done factoring. I always want to check, could I factor each factor some more? Well, I have the x minus 2, which I can't factor more. But I have this x squared minus 25. That's a difference of squares, so it factors into x plus 5 times x minus 5. And then I had the x plus 2 on the end of the original problem that's going to stay where it was. Now if I look at each factor to see, could I factor it any more? x minus 2, 
x plus 5, x minus 5, x plus 2. Those cannot be factored anymore. And these are the factors of p of x. Okay, let's turn the page and try example 2. Actually, on your page, it's on the, uh, the bottom half of the page. So on this one, I have a quartic polynomial, an x to the fourth. And it says that x equals 3 is a 0, and I'm supposed to find the other zeros. That might, means my answers are going to be x equals instead of the little factor groups. So if x equals 3 is a 0, that means that x minus 3 is a factor. So if x minus 3 is a factor, I should be able to divide that out, and then I'll be able to be factored. Okay. So let's see, if I take x minus 3 and I divide this out of h of x, look, my first term was x to the fourth, so I'm going to put that in the box. So I must have had an x cubed on top, which would give me a negative x cubed down here on the bottom. Looking back to the original problem, am I supposed to have negative 3x cubed inside? Yes, I am. So I don't need any more x cubes. If you want, you could put plus 0x cubes up there. Or we can just go ahead to the next term of negative 4x squared and bring that one into the box. So if I put negative 4x squared in the box, what must I have had on top? Must have had negative 4x. If I multiply down to the bottom, that gives me plus 12x. Am I supposed to have plus 12 in the box? Look back to the original problem. Yes, I am. So I am done because I have finished with the whole polynomial h of x. So now h of x is factored into x minus 3 times x cubed minus 4x. Now I want to look and see if I can factor those some more. Well, x minus 3 is nice and factored, but if I look at my h, or sorry, x cubed minus 4x, I could take an x out as a GCF, and then I'd have x squared minus 4 left. So is this factored completely? Well, again, I have my x minus 3, I have my x, but now down here on the end, this x squared minus 4, that's a difference of squares, and it can factor into x plus 2 times x minus 2. This is now factored completely, but let's look back at the original question. It didn't say to factor it, it said to find the zeros. The zeros mean I now have to set this equal to 0. So I'm looking for when does x minus 3 equal 0? That's when x equals 3. When does x equal 0? That's just x equals 0. When does x plus 2 equal 0? That's when x equals negative 2. And when does x minus 2 equal 0? That's when x equals positive 2. In my original problem, it was an x to the fourth function, which means I should have four zeros. When I look at my answers, I do have four zeros. The other way I could have expressed this, by the way, is to write it in set notation. Typically, if this were a multiple choice or an answer in the back of a textbook, they would write them in order from smallest to greatest. So they would put the negative 2 first, then the 0, then the positive 2, then the 3. So either of these answers could have been written for what are the zeros of h of x. Let's turn the page and do number 3. Okay, so here I have another x to the fourth function. And it tells me that x equals negative 1 is a 0, with a multiplicity of 2. What does that tell me? If x equals negative 1 is a 0, that means that x plus 1 is a factor. The multiplicity of 2 tells me that this factor is squared. So, I have two options. I can either square this factor and divide it out, or I can divide it out of the original polynomial twice. Um, I think that I would probably divide it out of the original polynomial twice, so that's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to take x plus 1, and I'm going to divide it out of f of x. So the first term in my original f of x was x to the fourth, so I must have had an x cubed on top. When I multiply, that gives me positive 1x cubed in the bottom box. I'm not supposed to have 1x cubed. I'm supposed to have positive 7x cubed. So I need plus 6x cubed more. So what must have I multiplied by on the top? I must have a 6x squared up there. 
if I multiply down to the bottom, then I have a plus 6x squared on the bottom. How many x squareds am I supposed to have? In the original problem, I'm supposed to have negative 3x squared. In order to get these positive 6 down to a negative 3, I need negative 9. So up in the top, I must have multiplied by a negative 9x times x to get negative 9x squared. On the bottom, that gives me negative 9x. So then I want to double check. Am I supposed to have negative 9x? No, looking in the original problem, I'm supposed to have negative 23x. So I need negative 14x to go with my negative 9x to give me negative 23x. So what must have been on top? A negative 14. When I multiply, negative 14 times 1 is negative 14. I hope I'm supposed to have negative 14 because I shouldn't have a remainder if this is in fact a factor, and that's what happened. There's no remainder. So now I've gotten f of x broken down some. I have x plus 1, and then I have x cubed plus 6x squared minus 9x minus 14. I could at this point try to factor that x cubed by grouping, but it's not going to work, so I'm going to go straight to another division. I'm going to divide by a second x plus 1 because I knew the multiplicity was 2. So that means it's going to go in twice. I'll bring my x cubed in the box, so I must have had an x squared on top and a plus 1x squared down on the bottom. I'm not supposed to have an x squared. I'm supposed to have 6x squared, so I need another positive 5x squared in the box. On the top, I must have had a 5x to multiply to 5x squared which gives me a plus 5x on the bottom. But I'm not supposed to have plus 5x. In the original problem here, I'm supposed to have minus 9x. To get my positive 5 all the way down to negative 9, I'm going to need negative 14x's. What must I multiply x by up here on the top? That'd be negative 14. Negative 14 times 1 is negative 14. Again, we're hoping this works which it does, there's no remainder. So now I have f of x factored down to x plus 1 times x plus 1 times the answer to my division up here, which was x squared plus 5x minus 14. Am I all the way done factoring? Well, I have a quadratic down here on the end, so we're not quite done yet. I'm going to write my x plus 1 with a squared because it had a multiplicity of 2. And then I'm going to see, can I factor this x squared plus 5x minus 14? That's just a regular quadratic. So I'm going to look for what two things multiply to negative 14x squared and add to the middle, which is 5x. Well, in order to multiply to a negative, I need a negative and a positive. They both have to have an x to make an x squared when I multiply. And I'm going to have 7 times 2 gives me 14. If I make the 7 positive and the 2 negative, they'll add to a positive 5. So if I'm doing this using boxes, I'm going to put my area inside here, x squared and my minus 14. I'm going to split my 5x up into a minus 2x and a plus 7x. GCF of the top row is x, so that puts an x up here, a minus 2 and then a plus 7 for this to factor. So my two factors that this x squared breaks down into is an x plus 7 and an x minus 2. This problem said to write f of x in factored form. So this is my answer because these are the factors. Okay, we have one last example on here, example number 4. It says that x equals negative 1 is a 0 of this cubic function, and they want us to find all the other zeros. Well, again, if x equals negative 1 is a 0, then that means that x plus 1 is a factor. So I should be able to take this x plus 1, divide it out of my cubic, and I'll be able to have a quadratic factor left. So the first term here was 2x cubed. I'm going to put that in the box. So up top, I must have had a positive 2x squared. On the bottom, that would give me a positive 2x squared. But am I supposed to have a positive 2x squared? 
No, I'm supposed to have positive 1x squared, so I need to subtract an x squared to get down to positive 1. So on the top, I would have had a minus 1x, and then on the bottom, that will also give me a minus 1x. Am I supposed to have a minus 1x? Well, if I look in this problem right here, I don't have any x's, so I need to get rid of my minus 1x by putting a plus 1x in. And then up on the top, I must have multiplied by positive 1, which gives me a plus 1 on the bottom. And that's what I was supposed to have, so this went in evenly. So right now, if I wrote y in factored form, it would be x plus 1 times, and then the other factor, which was the answer to my division, 2x squared minus x plus 1. Now ideally, I would go to factor this, and I would say what two things multiply to 2x squared and add to negative 1x. In order to multiply to a positive 2x, I either need to have a positive x times a positive x or a negative x times a negative x. If I want to add to a negative, they're both going to have to be negative. The only way I can multiply to positive 2x with negatives is negative 1 times negative 2. But unfortunately, that doesn't add to negative 1x. So this part right here is prime. If the problem said factor, I would stop here and these are my two factors. That quadratic factor cannot be factored anymore. But the problem said to find the zeros. So now I need to set each factor equal to zero. x plus 1 equals 0, well that gives me x equals negative 1, that was pretty easy. But if I can't factor this quadratic factor, I'm going to need to do the quadratic formula to solve it. So I'm going to write the quadratic formula down, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So if I plug this into the quadratic formula, the opposite of b is positive 1 plus or minus the square root, b squared would be negative 1 squared, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. And then I need to do some simplifying. If I figure out my discriminant, that's this part here underneath the square root symbol. If I do negative 1 squared, that's positive 1 minus 4 times 2 times 1 gives me 1 minus 8, which is negative 7. So I can tell that this is going to have two complex solutions with imaginary components because I've got a negative discriminant under there. So to simplify this, I'm going to want to take the i out of the negative 7. 7 can't be simplified further. And those are my other two solutions, 1 plus i square root of 7 over 4 and 1 minus i square root of 7 over 4. I can either leave it in this plus or minus form, or I could write it out in solution set notation, where I have my negative 1, I have 1 minus i square root of 7 over 4, and 1 plus i square root of 7 over 4. And those would be my three solutions. Remember, if the original problem was an x cubed, which this was, I need to have three solutions when I solve it. So ultimately, if I give you a polynomial function and either a factor or a zero to get you started, you should be able to find the other factors or zeros by using a combination of division, factoring, and the quadratic formula.